Hey, you're watching GM6 Drone Mapping. In this video, I'm going to show you five quick steps to adding ground control points to your Agisoft project. Stay tuned. Step one is generating the sparse point cloud. The first thing that we need to do after step one would be step two. For step two, we go down to the reference tab. I need to change my GPS coordinates on the images to match the GPS coordinates of my ground control points. To do that, I'll go up here to the fourth icon from the left, which is the Convert tab. And that brings up this window. From here, you need to locate the datum that your GCPs are in. Easiest way to do it is to find out what the EPSG code is for your datum. You can search it by filter or go through them manually. If for some reason you can't find the datum that you're looking for, go to this website, spatialreference.org. I'll also have a link in the description below. So you will find the datum that you need, you click on it, and then you'll download the .prj file. That's the file that you're going to load or import into your project. I need this one, so I'll click OK. And then, as you can see, these have changed from WGS84 to a state plane coordinate system. So now I'll move on to step three, which is import my GCPs. So I'll go up here to the icons above my images, and this first one is import. Then I'll just double click and add my CSV file. And make sure that the coordinate system is the correct one that I just chose. Make sure that my delimiter is correct. In my case, it's comma delimiter because I'm using a CSV file. And then next, I want to look at these labels here. They need to match up with these. This says label one, which is my labels for my GCPs. Number two is easting. 3 northing for altitude. So here I see that easting does not match the easting over here. So the way to fix that is change your tabs over here. So I'll change this to 3 and this to 2. So that just switches these two. So now they match. So my northing is lined up with these numbers and easting the same way. After that, I have just my labels for GCPs and checkpoints, but this has it as a yaw. So I want to untick the rotation. After that, click Next. And then it'll ask if I want to create a marker because I don't have any markers. Since I want to create markers for every GCP, I'll just click Yes to All. And then it creates all of my markers. To make sure you go up here to the top and click on this little icon so then they all appear. All right, now on to step four, which is to link the GCP markers to the images. So you just come over here to your GCP markers and you right click on any of them and then go down to filter photos by marker. When I click on that, you should get images down here. You'll have to go up here to the view tab, go down to photos, and then your images will appear. So you'll notice there's a white flag here. That just means that the GCP marker has been placed automatically, but it is not being taken into the calculation. So the first thing I need to do is double click on that image, and then I need to locate that marker. So here's my GCP target, and my GCP marker is over here. There's two ways to fix that. One is to drag the marker over to the target, scroll down, and then once you place your crosshairs over the target, just where you want them, just release, and now you have your first marker placed, and that turns green. The second way is to go down over to your target, place your arrow where you want it, and then right click, go down to place marker, and click on that number of marker. That's two, and then it turns green. So you want to do the same procedure for all of the GCPs. You need a minimum of three, but try to get as many as you can, four or five, something like that, you'll be good. Once you have three, you can come up here to the update, and then once you click on the update, go back, right click, go down to filter, photos by marker, then it'll give you the rest of the images that have that GCP in them. 
All right, so I'm going to go through here and mark all of my GCP targets and images. Once that's through, then we'll take a look at step five, which is the final step and the easiest. I'll select all of my images. Then I'll unselect all of the images. So now all of those are unselected. You can go through here and unselect every other GCP or, or however you want to do it and use those as checkpoints. And so then the ones that are ticked will be taken into account when processing. The other ones will not. And you can use those later to confirm your measurements. And of course, don't forget before you process your dense point cloud, go up to the top and be sure to click on that update button one more time. Then finish your process by generating your dense point cloud, your DEM, and then your orthomosaic.